music playing. Okay, so settle in and we're going to start with hi, um, a couple of quick stretches. So we're just going to stretch our neck a tiny bit and move our arms a little bit. Something that you can do while you're seated. So to start with, just draw some small circles with your nose. And then the circles are going to get bigger and bigger. And you can get as big as they'll go. Keep your movements gentle though, nothing hard or fast. And come back to the centre and just notice how your body feels after that movement. And you can start to make a circle in the other direction. Starting small gently spiralling out now you can make them as big as they'll go Gently testing the movement of your head. And come back to the centre. And then you can gently take your head over to one side and place your hand on top of your head. You don't need to pull on your head at all, just rest your palm on, onto the side and lean gently over. Stretch that side of your neck. And then come back to the centre and you can pull over to the other side and gently rest your hand on the opposite hand. And just feel the stretch down the side of the neck. And come back to the center and you can roll your shoulders backwards a few times. And roll them forwards a few times. And now you can take one arm and bring it across your front and gently push your elbow towards you. Gently stretch that shoulder to one side. And the same on the other side. Bring your arm across and just pull it towards you a little bit, nothing too hard, just a gentle stretch. back to the center and now I'd just like to invite you to move any way that you feel like 
stretch any part of your body that you feel like. Maybe you want to stretch your back. Maybe a couple of little cat cows. Maybe you want to put your hands up. And all the way down. Okay. And now just settle back into your position. Try to keep yourself even. And just notice how you're feeling before we start. drawing with the breath and for this what you're going to do is close your eyes and draw so whatever happens on the page doesn't matter it's not important you don't need to focus on it or think about it all you're focusing on is your breath and we're using drawing as a way to record our breath So we're going to start with our line drawing and all we do for that is take a breath in and for the length of every breath out we draw a line. So you're just following your out breath with your line as long as the out breath takes, recording it with your pen. Okay. Ready? Close your eyes and take that first breath in. And put that mark on the page for the out breath. And if you lose focus, don't judge yourself for it. Just bring yourself back to the breath and back to the recording with the pen. Okay, you can stop there. Nice. And now what we're going to do is our circle breath. And I've got my timer working this time. So for this, for the circle, we're going to breathe in for half the circle and out for the other half of the circle. And you're just going to keep drawing circles. You can spiral your way around the page if you want to. But you're going to keep your eyes closed and just focus on the breath. And keep drawing those circles. Half for the in breath and half for the out breath. Okay. Ready? 
guy. Breathing in and breathing out and just following with the breath. And now your circle can start to go in the other direction. Gently using the pen to watch one breath flow into the other. allowing yourself to soften into it. And now you can take your pen into your other hand, the one that doesn't feel normal to draw with, and carry on your circles with your eyes closed. Breathing in for one half and out for the other half.
circles want to go in the other direction keeping those eyes closed just feel your way around your breath Okay, and you can stop there. Okay. And maybe you're noticing your breath's getting longer and longer as we do this. And we're just gonna do box breathing. So this one is to notice the in-breath a pause, the out breath, and then a pause. So here you go, in breath, in breath, pause, <laughs> in breath, pause, out breath, pause. And you just keep going with those squares. You're not trying to you're not, you're not trying to hold your breath really you're just trying to notice that there is a gap between your in breath and your out breath okay ready go closing your eyes again breathing in Pausing, breathing out, pausing. Okay, you can stop there. Oh wait, sorry. 
go the other way around with the square with your other hand okay ready close your eyes and go again Okay, so now we're going to get ready to start drawing our object. Is that Meredith? Hi, Meredith. <laughs> okay. So, grab your textile, wherever it is, and you can position it however you like. Personally, I like to draw all the wrinkles and things in the fabric. But you've also got pattern or texture to play with. Or in Kaylee's case, you've got those the knit to play with. Okay. So what we're gonna do is blind observational drawing. So this isn't as blind as the last drawings because you can have your eyes open and um, but what you want to be doing is paying attention only to the object. Oh, it looks like the cat wants to go up. <laughs> only to the object and not to your page. So whatever happens on the page is a happy accident. It's not something we need to control or worry about. It's something that happens regardless. It's the result of an automatic process between the brain, the eye and the hand. So what you want to do is position your page slightly over to one side so I like to put it on the same side as my drawing hand, so I move it over to that side, just so that my page is not directly in between me and the object. I say object, garment. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to kind of build up an image layering it with lots of different marks and um, so to start with what you're going to do is a line drawing and the first thing you're going to pay attention to is just the folds in the fabric so this is a continuous line blind drawing so we don't take our pen off the page and the reason that we do that is so that we are taking in all of those little marks on the object so every time our eye moves our hand moves and um, if I for example start drawing something up here and then my eyes dart around and move to something over here in order to get from A to B I have to travel along all of the lines 
and across some different surfaces to get there. So I can't just dart my attention around the object, I have to follow along. Does that make sense? Yeah. Art school people all know this, you've all done this before. <laughs> okay, so. When you're ready, we're just going to go for like two minutes. Go. And you don't need to draw the whole object. The aim is to move around gently and slowly and just take in what's happening in front of you. Just gently follow. Just recording all the folds in the fabric that you can see. Travel around the same area multiple times if you want to. following those undulating lines around as the fabric curls around, folds in different ways. attention does wander don't judge yourself for it just bring it back to what you were drawing or the part that you were drawing close up you can see all those little V shapes in the knit probably or maybe it's not a V maybe they're little curls or something um, yeah so we're drawing the texture of the object and you're just noticing as that texture moves and which way it travels along the folds that you've just done 
So for me, I'm going to be drawing probably only the blue bits of my pattern. And I'm going to be kind of colouring those in, those blobs in, if that makes sense. So you might be drawing lots of little marks, or you might be colouring in some detail on your on your garment. Okay, when you're ready, go. Try not to look at your page at all, what happens there is not important. We're just looking at the object. Okay, now you can add a different pen, change your media again. Maybe you're going back to other ones from before. Okay, you can stop there. And so now what you're going to do is rearrange your object slightly. And you might want to fold it up a bit neater or what we used to do quite a lot at fashion school is lay a garment like flat on the floor so that you can see the whole thing um, almost as if someone's wearing it. So you can do that if you want to. Um, you don't have to. I'm going to keep mine on the table just so you can see what I'm drawing. But I'm going to kind of just arrange it a bit neater, I suppose. Okay. And this drawing is going to be a bit longer than your last one. So the last ones were just like three minute intervals. And this time we'll go for sort of four minutes at a time but I'll give you a new instruction every four minutes and we'll just do that um, two or maybe three times we'll see how it goes okay so you're going to use your three different pens for three different aspects to start with so first you're going to do 
um, the line drawing the same as we were doing before. No way. First, we're going to do the light sections of what you're looking at. So with every garment, maybe you can see here mine, there are light sections and dark sections. So it's like, there we go. Um, so you've got like a dark valley and a light mountain on each bit of the garment. So the first thing that you're going to do is just the light sections. So you're going to take, it doesn't have to be a light pen though, it can be anything. But for me I'm going to go neon. Wait, highlighter. Highlighter neon. And that's what I'm going to use for my light sections. And essentially what I'm doing is just putting a blob down that's roughly the same size as the light blob that I can see. Does that make sense? When you're ready, go. And we're still not looking at the page, so that's over to one side. We're moving our eyes around the object. And the hand is following the eyes. So you're noticing the shapes that the light creates when it's bouncing off the object. So we're only drawing the light sections, so you don't need to worry about the dark sections. And if your shoulders are punched up, just roll them back. remember how the drawing looks, it's not important. We're just practicing paying attention, paying close attention. And taking in the details. Keep going on those light sections for now. Okay, you can grab a different pen and this time going the same way but just putting in some dark blobs. Just some blobs for the darker sections. Noticing those shadows, those valleys and recording the shape of them. And again, not looking at the page, whatever happens there, it's not important. 
what's important is just looking, noticing and paying attention. Just move slowly around the object, there's no rush. You don't need to draw the whole thing either. Just recording the shapes of those shadows. Okay, you can stop there and if your page is really full then you might want to start a new one and um, I'm going to go on top of my drawing with a, with a different type of pen I'm going to go with a, a really thin black pen that's different to the others um, and now you've got four minutes just to go around the object you can take in with another continuous line and you can take in both the folds in the fabric and the pattern or the texture okay ready go Just gently working your way around, not worrying about the result. The results are not important.
you're doing sequins or beads then each bead will have its own light and dark shadow going on. Maybe you can record a little bit of that. And you're following the texture, noticing that the texture travels over those valleys, over the mountains, and down the valleys of the garden. Again, there's no hurry, you can spend as long as you like on whatever detail you're drawing. Don't draw what you think you're looking at, draw what's actually what you're actually looking at. So every time your eyeball moves, your hand moves. 